So in the previous video, we proved that we had a problem with trap signals. Um, with this sequence, uh, if I press, put the system in the wrong, and try to make it operate, you can see here, when I do that, Y1 attempts to come on, but you can see there's a problem because Y2 is already active. So if Y1 and Y2 both activate at the same time, the valve won't move. So we've got a problem with trap signals. We've got to come up with a solution. So just let me talk you through how we do that. So what basically what we need to do is, between these two here, we need to split. We need to find a method of making sure that we're in two different, um, you can almost say two different groups. So we've got to split the system there so that we identify when we're doing this part and we identify when we're doing this part. And that'll mean that we can split the signals. So basically, if I swap things around a little bit, Roof. We're splitting it there. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to introduce an extra relay. And that relay will be active for this part of the sequence and not active for this part. So we'll be able to use it to interrupt the signals that we want to interrupt. So how we do that is we'll make ourselves a little bit of space. And we will bring in a normally open contact, two normally open contacts, a normally closed contact. an additional relay. And join up these lines. So this is K5. Relay 5, and we all know from previous um, discussions that this is a self latching element here. So, when re the contact or relay K5 comes on, this contact closes, this will provide a current flow to the relay. So, basically, what we're saying is this relay needs to be active, become active at the start, and then deactivate here when it gets into the second half. So we'll activate it with relay K1 and we'll deactivate it with K relay K3. So now K5 is going to come on when K1 activates and it's going to stay on until K3 activates. When K3 comes on this normally closed contact will open K5 will come on, or sorry, K5 will go off. So now we've got a relay that is coming on here and going off here. We can then use it to interrupt certain elements of this sequence. So <clears throat> we had a problem here when Y1 came on, Y2 was already on. Now if we know that K5 is going to be off in this part of the sequence, if we put Uh, normally closed, sorry, normally closed contact here. Boom K5. Then <coughs> that contact will open whenever K5 comes on. 
So at the start, that's going to open, turn off Y2, therefore Y1 can run freely. We then also have an issue here where we want Y3 to be able to activate, but Y4 will already be active. That's in the middle part. So what we do is we drop in a normally open element from K5 here. So now we've interrupted the elements that we need to interrupt. So in theory, we go to run the sequence. And now if you're using the Fluid Sim software, you'll be able to step through and see what happens in each step. So if we keep hitting the button, and it didn't do what I wanted it to do. Yeah, so you'll be able to see each arm go. And as the uh, lateral circuit changes state and the pneumatic circuit changes state, so we get back to the start. So hopefully that explains one the technique adding that additional relay means that we can uh, prevent our trapped signals by using self-latching fifth relay and then introducing and normally open and normally close contacts from that relay.